so um oops did not mean to join the audio the audio okay um if you are cooking along tonight we're making uh roasted sweet potato and black bean tacos with a cilantro chimichurri and also restaurant style guacamole and i was mentioning earlier the ingredient list seems a little bit it makes it seem like it's a lot more work than it is it's really easy um so i hope that you enjoy um if you're cooking along uh, go ahead and preheat your oven to 400 degrees. And um, I'm going to scrub my sweet potatoes. You can peel them if you want, like Rachel did. And also feel free to chime in. You can unmute yourself if you have any questions. You can feel free to type in the chat. Um, always happy to answer any questions. It doesn't have to be about the specific recipe either. If you just have like a general food related question, happy to help if it's something that I'm familiar with. Um, for the sweet potatoes, I'm going to just cut them into kind of consistently sized pieces. So um, about an inch, they can be a little smaller, just so they're around the same size because then they'll cook at about the same rate. I'm just kind of trimming off the ends and I'll compost those guys. And then I know Rachel, Rachel knows this is, they're a little wonky to work with. So I usually try to cut a flat piece that way it has something sturdy to sit kind of upright. Cause if you try to slice while it's rolling around you can very easily injure yourself. Um, like butternut squash is another kind of wonky ingredient that I often will buy already peeled and diced because I just they're kind of annoying to work with um so I'm all for shortcuts if, if they save you some sanity I haven't tried this with um with frozen sweet potatoes because I don't know if when they thaw if they would get kind of like too soggy because we want them to get a little caramelized in the onion I mean in the oven so you could try it though it would probably still taste good it just wouldn't be as like, you know, when you get like the roasted bits and they caramelize and they get nice and extra sweet. So it just might not be quite like that. So I'm just grabbing a half sheet pan. I like using, I pretty much always like using one that's got a, a rim around the edge. Just, it keeps things from falling out. Uh, if you take something out of your oven a little hastily, you don't have to worry about potatoes falling all over the ground. So I do have a tiny kitchen, it's, it's no joke. So I'm gonna play Tetris with my materials here. And just kind of as I cut these, I'm gonna put them onto the sheet pan. Um, depending on the size of your sweet potato, uh, I put two sweet potatoes in the ingredients list. If, if your pan gets super crowded, it might, um, you might wanna stop at like one and a half. Just, they'll still be good if, the pan is fully crowded, but just know that you won't get quite as much caramelization um, as if there's a little more space around each of them. Sometimes it's like a, you have to weigh out whether you would rather have more food with less dishes instead of doing like two separate sheet pans or um, have everything nicely caramelized. Yes, yes, you may have that. My son's asking for some dessert candies from grandma. Um, I'm curious if anybody has had uh, plant-based tacos before. You can feel free to unmute and chat or you can type it in the chat box. Um, and if you have what your favorites are, my family's omnivorous, so we eat meat and veggies. I try to do more plant-based meals when I can just so that we aren't eating meat quite as often. But um, I like these, I like using, I have one recipe on my website that uses chickpeas. Um, just canned chickpeas and I make like a peach salsa to go on top of it. It's a really fun combination. I feel like there's just, there's a lot of really interesting things you can do without meat when it comes to, um, especially tacos. Like tacos are so versatile. I feel like you can find ways to make a lot of different things work. Um, i trying to think breakfast tacos are always good with eggs. Um, we often just do like either um, ground turkey, beef, or 
uh, we like Beyond Meat as far as like a vegan ground meat alternative. And I have tried a recipe from someone else's website that was really good. Um, she took walnuts and you can process them and they, they kind of get like the texture of ground meat, which is really interesting. So I've got my sweet potato cubes. They're not super, super consistent, but um, they, will, they will cook just fine. I'm going to um, drizzle it with about two tablespoons of oil. You can use any like neutral flavored oil that you like. I've got olive oil today. You could use avocado, um, grape seed, uh, peanut oil. I used to use peanut oil as like my default high, high heat cooking oil. And then I worried that if I had like a friend, I know a few people that have nut allergies and I was just worried that like if I'd rather use a different one. Um, so like grape seed or, or um, avocado oil and things like things like oils. I'll buy them in bulk from the wholesale club because like we use plenty of it. So I feel it's a little more cost effective that way. Ashley, do you not use olive oil for high heat? Um, not super high. I'm using olive oil today. This is 400. But if I was like frying something like, oh, like yeah. really frying, I would use uh, one of the others. Um, this is like a light. I can. I'll tell you, I, I got this brand. I don't like this container. It drips everywhere when you try to pour out of it. But this is, a, it says it's for sauteing and grilling. It's not extra virgin olive oil. It's just an olive oil. It's very annoying to try to use. So that's why I've been using it in this, this one. Um, but yeah, grape, I say, I would say grape seed or sunflower. Those are my kind of my go-tos for um, like chicken cutlets or um, like if I'm making like fried falafel or something like that. Uh, all right, so we have sweet potatoes there. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of taco seasoning. You can absolutely use homemade if you have it. I tend to like go on kicks where I'll have homemade taco seasoning around. It's not difficult to make. I just don't have any right now. Um, I like, instead of the single packets, I like this thing because you can measure as much as you want. And my family likes the taste of it. So I know there was one when my son was younger, it was a little spicy for him. So I don't, the, uh, this one's old El Paso, if that's of interest to you. Um, Simply Organic makes a really nice taco seasoning also. Um, so just that, oh, I've got it all over my counter. And then we'll do half a teaspoon of salt. I'm using kosher salt. If you're using table salt, that's like the more fine grained kind, um, start with a quarter teaspoon because since the grains are so much smaller, they take up less room. So you get more salt in the measurement. I'm just using my hands. It just kind of is the easier way to do this. I'm gonna do a couple of grinds of black pepper on this also. We, we recently, I guess a couple months ago, got like a motion detector sink. It's the best thing, except when you scoot something back and you don't realize, and then it just kind of um, turns on and startles everybody. But it's been great, especially if you're like prepping things like seafood, you don't want all over your hands. Um, so my oven's not quite preheated, so I'm going to set this aside for now. Um, once it's preheated, we'll roast those for 20 minutes before we add the black beans to it. The black beans are already cooked in the can, so um, they'll happen a lot faster. All right, so the next, which thing do we wanna do next? We're gonna pickle some red onions. It's just a really quick pickle. So grab a small bowl. If, if onions are, oh, oh, there we go. Put these in for 20 minutes. Alexa, set a potato timer for 20 minutes. If um, red onion is a little strong for you, you can use shallots. Those are a nice um, little milder onion flavor, but they still have that nice purple color. You could also um, soak them. We're gonna soak, we're gonna pickle them in lime juice, but you could also soak your sliced onions in cold water for like 10 minutes first. And that'll kind of take the bite out of them and then drain them and then soak them in the lime juice. That will help kind of mellow it out. Um, we need about a quarter cup. You don't have to be super like specific with it. Just about a quarter cup. I'm going to put them in a, a small dish and cover it with lime juice. 
And for the guacamole later, we're gonna use two tablespoons of mint. So I'm just gonna, since I already have the red onion out, I'm just gonna do those both right now. So just as thinly as you can. So I'll probably do like two, two thirds of this maybe. And then I'll mince the rest. We like, my family likes doing um, like on the side of some dishes, black beans and rice and topping them with just some minced red onion. It's like a, a nice combo. I don't know what it is about the red onion with the black beans that works really well. Um, but this recipe came about because we were making steak on the grill one night and I had some sweet potatoes and I made chimichurri and the chimichurri from my steak kind of like seeped onto my um, sweet potato. And I was like, oh man, I didn't really want a sauce on there. And then I tried to buy it and I was like, okay, this actually works really well. <laughs> so sometimes the accidental um, additions like that end up being really good. So I'm gonna just kind of mince this little piece and then stick it to the side. It's probably enough. Um, if you don't like, this is for the guacamole, if you don't like onions in your guacamole, or if you don't like tomatoes in your guacamole, you don't have to put it in. It's optional. Um, if my husband's making it, sometimes he'll leave out the tomatoes, but I, I really like tomatoes. And you can always, if they don't get minced up quite well enough, you can just kind of go back over. Um, this program, so this Cook It Together program that we're doing, we have three lined up right now. So we have this, today's program. Next month we're doing, um, I think a skillet lasagna on Wednesday, March 23rd at six. Um, so it's a skillet lasagna and you can use uh, ground meat or vegan ground. I like making it with turkey. You can use lamb, beef, um, and then uh, garlic Parmesan bread to go with it and a creamy balsamic dressing in case you wanna make salad. And that's, uh, I live up in Austin. I know many of you are in Rye, but um, there's a restaurant here, Capri, that I love. Their creamy balsamic salad dressing is like my favorite thing. And I'll dip the bread, I'll dip my pizza crust in it. Like it barely makes it on the salad, but it's really good. And I kind of figured out what I think is a pretty good work alike for it. So I just have some partial limes left over from cocktail making sitting around. So I'm going to use those to juice first before I cut into a new one. Um, and this is, if you've done one of my classes before and we've used citrus, I've showed you this, but it's still like, it blows people's minds. So just in case you don't know, um, I always thought you put the citrus in with the curved side down when you use a juicer like this. Um, do I see a jaw drop, Rachel? <laughs> uh, oh, I can't hear you, but I'm imagining right now your head just went like, if you put it this way with the curved side. Because I have the same thing. Okay. Yeah. So if you put it with the curved side up, this actually compresses it and you get way more juice out of it. I usually turn it sideways also just to eke a little out, but you get like, like a puck of lime. So you get like all of the juice out. And I if you're, yeah, go ahead. Wrong. This, that's wrong. like one of those things where you're like, oh my God, but what have I been doing my whole life? Um, but yeah, so this is really uh, useful. And if you happen to be making margaritas to go with your tacos, which if you're into that, I recommend. This is great for using to rim the glass to get uh, lime juice on there. So extra, extra usage. So just going to kind of I think I probably put a lot of red onions in here. So I'm going to need to do a little more lime juice. Uh, if your limes are really like extra hard, you can take them on your cutting board and just kind of like roll them with the palm of your hand and that'll help kind of get the break down the citrus and should help make it a little easier to juice. I know some people microwave them for a few seconds. I've never done that. You certainly could just don't, don't microwave them for too long or it might, I don't know what it would do. Like a microwaved lime would probably burn you when you want to take it out. But yeah, it's got my little lime pucks. Um, all right, so ideally you wanna like mostly cover or cover your red onions. I put a lot of onions in there today. So that's fine. I'm going to add though a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. And I'm just going to toss it together. You can use your fingers, you can use a fork, but it's just going to sit and hang out. And every 
few minutes or so, I'll just give it another toss. And they'll start like the white part of the red onion will start to turn purple and it'll start to break down a little bit so they're a little softer. You also could, you could mince, you could just mince all the onions if you wanted to do minced onions for your tacos. Um, and again, this is optional. It's just, it's a pretty, it adds a nice like bright kind of pop to it. So I'm gonna set that aside for now. Um, and then we're gonna make the chimichurri. I'm gonna put the stuff. I've been like, I, I only got into composting maybe a year ago, not even. I'm in a co-op complex and I didn't think we could do it, but Asmi has a really great program where we can take it somewhere and then they, they deal with all of the things. So it's really, really great. I'm working on writing a post about it just because I think it's not as difficult as people think. Uh, I was very intimidated by it, but it does not have to be scary. All right, for the cilantro chimichurri, we're gonna, I'm gonna grab my food processor. I have, I have one more like trick that I think is really amazing. So hopefully Rachel doesn't have to leave quite yet to pick her husband up, but let's see. I have a question in the recipe, um, cause I do have to leave in a minute. How much yep. oil do you use for the chimichurri? In the chimichurri I use, let's see. Um, I use about a quarter cup, but if it seems like it needs to be looser, feel free to add more. You might add less. I feel like it's like, depending on the direction of the wind <laughs> and the, you know, the position of the planet, some days you need less, some days you need more. Um, so just kind of like, let it puree for a while. You want it like fairly smooth. It can still be kind of chunky, but, um, yeah, I would say about a quarter cup. Is that right? And Ashley, Steph is asking about the sweet potatoes. They're in the oven, right? They're, Steph yes, they're in the oven for 20 minutes and then they'll go in for another uh, another eight minutes once we add the sweet potatoes. I'm, so I'm going to peel, beans. sorry? The beans, right? Oh yeah, the black beans. Um, I need, sorry, I'm like the extra appliance. I'm covering my recipe up. I need six cloves of garlic for the chimichurri and then one for the guacamole. So I'm going to peel them all at once. Um, so I'm going to do seven. And every once in a while, my husband gets me like a, just like a whatever gadget to see if we like it for the kitchen or you know, a stocking stuffer. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this one, it's a garlic peeler. We, we jokingly call it the garlic cannoli because it kind of looks like a cannoli, but it's basically, it's just a piece of silicone. So if you have like a reusable silicone bag, you can use that in much the same way. Um, you just kind of pop the cloves in here and you press down on your board and, and then the peels kind of fall right off. That's not like the super fun trick though, Rachel. It's, as soon as I get these other four peeled, I'll show you for mincing large amounts of garlic. That almost worked, there we go. Sometimes they hang on a little bit. For mincing large amounts of garlic, if you have a food processor, you turn the food processor on and you drop them down the chute one by one with nothing else in there and it minces them so nicely. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about the chopping them. If you, if you don't have a, Chimichurri is hard without a food processor or a blender um, just because a lot of herbs, but you certainly could do it by hand. I did that already and I followed your direction. Oh, and, oh, oh good. I, I didn't know I could do that by doing it that way. See, so you already taught me. I'm so glad because I, you know, whenever I find something like that, there's just like a, it's little, but it really makes a difference. I, I am like. so excited that you taught me this about the, this. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you were here for it. I recently read in a cookbook that those are also, those tools are also not just a citrus juicer. I read that they're also called Mexican elbows. But I was like, I don't know if that, I mean, it was from like a James Beard award winning cookbook author. So it just seems like, I don't know if I want to refer to anything like that, but. Yeah, you don't know. <laughs> Politically incorrect. Right? Yeah, exactly. I was like, mm, and it wasn't an old cookbook, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay, so the trick that I, I was talking about. I do have to run, but I'll be back. Okay. okay. 
Thank you so much. But, yes, thanks for joining. So when you're using the food processor, make sure you take this piece out. I've definitely done that before where I accidentally like drizzled oil in here. Um, so we're gonna turn it on low and just drop the cloves in one by one. And while the blade's spinning, it'll mince everything up nicely. I'm doing six of them, so I'm saving one for the guacamole. So I know you can't see that on the overhead view, but like six cloves of garlic in like 20 seconds, maybe. So that's like one of my favorite tricks. I think you could even, I don't pre-prep minced garlic for things, but I bet you, if you wanted to, you could do a bunch of cloves. You could even buy like a jar of them already peeled and do this and put them in olive oil in a sealed jar in the refrigerator. If you want like, yeah, easy. I feel like it would work. It'd be a good base for like sauces and stuff. Um, all right, so chimichurri, I've got the garlic in there. Then I'm gonna add cilantro, about a bunch, one bunch-ish of cilantro. I know bunches are in various sizes. Make sure you really rinse the cilantro because sometimes they're kind of sandy and gritty. Um, one tip that I have just kind of in general buying stuff like cilantro and avocados, although there's like drama in the avocado world right now. Um, but is if you want, if you want to make guacamole or something and you need a, a ripe avocado today or tomorrow, if you have like a Mexican or a Latin market in your area, oftentimes they'll have a lot of avocados and there will be ripe ones in there. Um, I live in Austin, there's a place nearby called La Placida. They have tons of avocados and like the limes and lemons, everything is so much less expensive also. Um, so more like H Mart, like a Korean market, an Asian market would also, a lot of times they have really good deals on produce that needs to be used like within the next up to two days. Um, so it's a kind of a nice way to get, get things really fresh, but as long as you're gonna use them kind of soon. So I've got my bunch of cilantro. I included the stems um, in there also. Uh, uh, if you have red wine vinegar, use red wine vinegar. I realized today that I don't, so I'm going to use two, um, two tablespoons. I'm going to use white wine vinegar. Uh, apple cider vinegar would probably work too, or champagne vinegar. Red wine vinegar is nice with it though. I just ran out. Okay, and then I'm going to use a tablespoon of lime juice. I'm not going to measure it. I'm going to live on the edge. I think it'll be fine. Certain things you really have to measure when you're cooking and if you're baking, definitely. Um, this type of thing, I'm not. And I'm, even though this is in a quarter, I'm still going to try to put it with the curved side up to add into here. Okay. So we've got the lime juice, the red or white or other <laughs> vinegar. Um, I'm gonna add a half teaspoon of dried oregano and a half teaspoon of kosher salt. This one, my son, uh, aside from my son, this one's been a really uh, a hit with meat eaters and non meat eaters alike because there's something about like the hardiness of the beans and potatoes that kind of doesn't leave you wishing you had steak on the side although additional steak in these tacos would be delicious so feel free i just saw my red onions so i'm gonna stir them again just to kind of get them all covered in the lime juice i'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper you can leave that out if you want it just adds like a little bit of a kick or if you like a lot of kick, feel free to add more. Cayenne is pretty potent though. And I'm gonna process this first as is. And once it's chopped up a bit, I'll start streaming in some oil. So I'm just gonna run this. I'll start it on low till I get stuff chopped up. And then usually I'll scrape the sides down. I think I've raised my 
just gonna raise my camera a little bit if you can see that better. Or at least that way you can see some of this. I'm gonna scrape the sides down just so we don't have any like super big chunks. All right, and then we're taking this piece out again and you're gonna stream in about a quarter cup of oil. Again, a neutral flavored oil. I'm using olive oil, uh, avocado oil, peanut oil, grapeseed oil, sunflower oil. Um, I'm not a fan of canola oil. A lot of people like it. I think it has, to me, it's got like a really weird plasticky taste. But if you like canola oil, by all means use it. Um, and I'm just gonna let it go until it starts to look kind of saucy in here. Um, and if there's big chunks again, we'll scrape the sides again. So this is starting to look a little creamy from the oil. So instead of like, I don't know if you can really tell on camera, it's getting like kind of creamy instead of just bright herbs. If you are concerned about too much oil, you can leave it with a little less and it'll be like a more rustic, like PC type of um, chimichurri, or you can add more to make it smoother. You can really, probably if you did this in like a Vitamix blender, it could get really super smooth. For me, I think this is good. I'm just gonna taste it. It's very garlicky. So like for garlic lovers, if you if you're already if you haven't yet made it and you're not like a huge garlic fan, maybe just put like one or two cloves because they're raw. They'll get like a little bit um, less acidic from the um, from the lime juice or not not acidic, less like spicy kind of from the lime juice, but it'll still be kind of potent. So I'm just gonna taste it and if it's if it needs like a little more salt or lime i'll add a little more it's like pow but i feel like that's how chimichurri should be Let's move this over here i if you if you're on instagram and you're ever curious after one of my classes i always do a cooking class aftermath because i can't clean as i go when i'm teaching so it's just like the the bomb zone of my kitchen with like all the stuff everywhere. My my son loves it. It's awesome. like his favorite part. <laughs> well, cause you know, on on social media, everything is like, this is my beautifully curated this. And, this <laughs> is, yeah. and it's like, yes, but also I will be doing dishes until like nine o'clock because <laughs> gotta break down my lights and everything. So I'm just gonna put this into a little, I like serving it out of a little pitcher. If you if you have one, you don't have to. Can just pop it in a bowl with a spoon um, but this way everybody can kind of add however much they want um, i normally also like putting a little we use greek yogurt but or sour cream or mexican crema on top because i like the kind of cooling factor that it adds i don't i ran out of that also because i've been <laughs> I'm making my own yogurt in the instant pot and i love doing it and i thought i still had a little bit left but i don't so we won't have that today but for the leftovers i will so, okay, got that going. Our sweet potatoes should be about ready for the black beans. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse, drain and rinse the black beans. Um, I, the first time I made this recipe, it was for a brand and they carried zero sodium black beans. And that worked really well. Um, this, the ones that I have today have sodium and it'll be fine. Alexa, stop. So, just gonna drain the liquid out and rinse them until when you're rinsing beans, like there's a lot of extra starches and stuff in there. This will rinse off extra sodium, but um, just kind of rinse it until it's not foamy looking anymore. Like it kind of looks like when you first start rinsing them, if you if you've never rinsed a can of beans before, it kind of looks like soap bubbles up top at first. And it's like, what is this? But 
and then I just kind of like shake it until most of the water comes out. All right, and then I'm going to add the black beans, put an extra half teaspoon of salt in there. Although I'm, I'm not gonna do that because I'm using salted black beans. If you're using unsalted, um, you can add another half teaspoon of salt. These, these potatoes look to me already like they're pretty much done. So we're just really like heating the black beans through. So just gonna add them right on top. You're gonna get a little sizzle. And then I'm gonna add, did I put the oregano on? No, I put the oregano on the chimichurri. Okay, so we're gonna add um, a half teaspoon of dried oregano in, onto the black beans. And then I'm just gonna take my spatula and just mix it around so that everything is coated. And then we'll pop it back in for just another eight minutes. This is also a good time if you have any potatoes that are like kind of sticking to the tray, kind of scoops them up a little bit. Although again, the parts where it sticks, you get that nice like caramelization. So I like it. You know, like the burnt bubbles on like a pizza crust, like that stuff is delicious. So back into the oven for eight more minutes. Alexa, set a timer for eight minutes. All right, all that's left is the guacamole and it's super easy and like, oh man, it's as good as the restaurants. If you have a mortar and pestle, that's what we're gonna use here. Um, I'll show you how to, or I can talk you through how to do garlic if you don't have one of these. Um, if you go, if you've ever been to a Mexican restaurant where they come do it like table side, they use what's called a molcajete and it's like this giant stone uh, basin. And then you, they smash the garlic and the herbs together or the spices together. And that paste kind of makes the garlic less intense. And I think that's really what makes it taste like restaurant style guacamole. So. If you're doing this on a cutting board, what you can do is you can mince your garlic clove first on the cutting board, sprinkle the salt that's gonna go in the guacamole on top, and then you'll like smash, you'll like kind of whack it down and keep smashing it and scooping it to form a paste. And then you can put that in a bowl. If you have a mortar and pestle though, highly recommend doing it this way. So what I do for that is garlic clove and a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And if anybody has any other questions, feel free to jump in. I, I'm more than able to talk for an hour straight, but you know, I, I don't want you to feel, don't feel shy. If you have any questions or comments, or if I'm talking too fast, I get a little Gilmore girlsy sometimes, let me know. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna put those two things and cumin and coriander. So we'll do um, a quarter teaspoon each of ground cumin and ground coriander. And coriander is the seed that cilantro comes from. So if you're ever making a recipe from a, like a British chef and it says to use chopped coriander and you're like, how would I chop this <laughs> dried spice? They're talking about um, cilantro. But the flavors, the flavors are really different though. Um, I think cumin and coriander go together really, really well and lots of like Mexican dishes, Indian dishes. So with the salt is gonna be like our abrasive agent and the inside of, the, of this is nice and um, rough. So I'm gonna kind of smash this, kind of tap it to break up the garlic clove. You could mince it first if you wanted to, but you don't have to. So I'm just kind of tapping it and then I'll start rubbing it around like this and really working it into a paste. I'm telling you, like, if you start making guacamole like this and you go to a restaurant and they want $15 to come do it by your table, like, go for it if you want to, but I would rather have, like, extra salsa or something. 
Um, so just for, I know on the replay, you won't have the overhead views. So here is, that is the garlic, the salt, cumin and coriander. So it's a nice paste now. So, um, and this part is the mortar. I always get them confused. The bowl is the mortar and this is the pestle. Um, I used to have a smaller one that was ceramic um, and it had a wooden pestle. I, if you can get like granite or marble or something really heavy, I think it works a lot better. And there's also different types that, that um, have different coarsenesses inside. Like if you wanna make, um, there's like a Lebanese garlic sauce that you can make. There's like, I don't have room, so I have one, <laughs> but um, it comes in handy for a lot of things. Rick Bayless has a lot of recipes for like homemade salsas and they use that too. I was just kind of tossing my onions around again. You can see they've already wilted down a bit from being in the lime juice because before they were peeking out quite a bit. All right, so I'm gonna add two avocados. My avocados are small. I found a bag of them that were really small. I always have to do one at a time anyway, just because this isn't super big. Um, if you haven't cut into an avocado before, be very careful, but you can kind of feel around. You'll feel the pit and then you just kind of rotate the avocado around. And then you pray to the avocado gods that you have a good avocado and we see like, yeah, okay, she's good. She's good. Um, and then you don't have to do anything fancy. You can dirty another spoon if you'd like to scoop it out delicately, um, but you can just squeeze it right into there. And then to get the pit out very carefully, again, you whack your knife in there and just turn it. Again, this, you know, a couple little imperfections, but it's fine. It's getting smashed up. It doesn't matter. Um, if you're ever saving half an avocado, the half with the pit is the better one to save. It stays green a little better that way. Right. You um, put it in the refrigerator with the pit in it, Ashley? Yeah. If you have a half one, you put it in with the pit. What You can rub a little olive oil on the flesh of it if you want. Yeah. Um, that can help. I would just like, I've stored it in one of these bags before, or you can put, if you have like plastic wrap or something, touching the skin, that'll help. Um, and if you're making guacamole in advance, similarly, you can take a piece of plastic wrap once it's all made and push it down until it's touching completely the surface of it and then stash that in the fridge. Um, I also like these, I have these, like they came with a bunch of different sizes, they're bowl covers. And so you can put it on and then you can just like, it stretches over different sizes of bowls, but then you just press it down until it comes into contact because that will keep the air from oxidizing. Um, if anybody wants, since we have, I have avocados and we have a little time, does anybody curious to see how to make an avocado rose? I know they're like a fun kind of fancy thing. You can do that. It's like a random, if you ever want to impress somebody. Um, all right. So you can peel the skin right off of the avocado, half. You wanna use an avocado that's ripe but not super mushy for this. And you can just separate the skin. You can use a, um, a spoon to peel it off, but I think peeling it like this works, works a little bit better. This one's a little brown on the edge, but I'll, I'll just cut that bit off. Um, this is fun for like, you can add it onto a salad or a grain bowl or um, avocado toast. So all you have to do, just gonna, I'm gonna cut the little brown piece off and I'm gonna put it in my mortar because it's gonna be good. It's not like rotten, it's just a little discolored. So all you have to do is very, as thinly as you can, slice down the avocado. So if you put your finger to kind of help guide it, to help keep them from popping up, that helps. And if, it, if one pops up, just kind of see if you can tuck it back down. I do this sometimes on like a, an English muffin. If you're um, locally, Peak skill. I know they sell them in a lot of places. Uh, it's called Damn Good English Muffins, D-A-M. Good. Uh, they make sourdough English muffins and they're delicious. 
So we've got the thin, thinly sliced avocado. Ooh, I'm gonna take that out. Alexa, stop. I'll take these out of the oven. If you wanna test your sweet potato, you can pierce it with a knife just to make sure that it's fully cooked through. I can tell what these are, but you can see they're nice and brown and roasty. So. my oven off. All right, so if you were making an avocado rose, it's gonna be sad, we're gonna smash it up after, but that's okay. You have your thinly sliced avocado and then you just kind of gently fan it out into a line. And you're just kind of separating the pieces so that they still overlap, but they're coming out in a line. And then you start at one end, I usually start at the smaller end once it's fanned. And you just kind of tuck and turn. And then when you go to transfer it onto your um, toast or your salad or whatever, just take a knife or a bench scraper underneath. So you kind of get it. And you have, whoo, it's trying to show up for that angle. I can't do that way. But, um, <laughs> Like that's just gonna fall. But if you transfer it like that, um, then it'll stay pretty. nice and pretty. And it looks like it took a ton of effort, but it really doesn't. <laughs> those, those are my favorite things is where it's like, oh man, she must have like spent a long time doing that. It's like, no, I still made it, but it was like pretty easy to do. Um, all right, so I have one and a half avocados. These avocados are really small, so I'm probably gonna put three in here. Test the limits of your mortar, however much fits. So I just mashed up, you can leave it as chunky or as smooth as you like. I know different people, kind of like with salsa, some people prefer a more smooth salsa. Sometimes like people like it a little chunkier. Oh, this is like a beautifully ripe avocado. If you're curious about what's going on in the avocados from Mexico world, <laughs> eh, there's a lot of stuff on the internet about it. I'm Right now there's a temporary ban on avocados from Mexico in the US, but luckily they grow in California, also Florida. All right, so I'm like pretty much maxed out on space for avocados here. So I'm just gonna smash it around. The only other thing, like if, you're, if you happen to be a cilantro hater, you could leave the cilantro out. You obviously wouldn't be using the chimichurri, although you could make chimichurri with parsley. Um, that's the original chimichurris I've had. I'll have parsley, not cilantro. Um, but the only other thing I would say that you have to have in here to make it taste like guacamole is the lime juice. Um, but I'm going to also add some tomatoes and red onion to mine and cilantro. So about a tablespoon of lime juice. I have one recipe for um, for guacamole that uses, I toast some spices and I grind them in with the mortar and pestle too. That's a fun, just like something different. I also have one that I put on turkey burgers with um, grilled pineapple just for something a little different. So this is when I switch to a spoon and I just stir the other things in. So I've got that. I'm gonna do about two tablespoons or however much you can go less than that if you want of minced onion, the red onion. Um, if, if you don't have red, I would say, again, shallots or yellow onions would be nice. Um, I like adding tomatoes. We always have grape tomatoes in my house, so I just use those. But if you have a larger tomato, just cut it up into smallish pieces. And this is pretty too, with like those like multicolored tomatoes that come in the packs. I just, uh, I find keeping a pack of grape tomatoes, like you can do a really quick pasta sauce with it, just roasted, um, like broiled tomatoes are really good on the side of things. So like four to six tomatoes, just cut them up into small pieces. And then um, about a quarter cup of chopped cilantro or like minced as finely as you want it. Again, stems are fine in there. And I 
think once this is in, I'm going to taste it um, again, like the other uh, one tasting for seasoning, just if it's, if it's missing something, it's usually either acid or salt. So I would add a little, another squeeze of lime juice or a little bit more salt. And you can cut this up as finely as you like, I'm like cramming everything on this little butcher block here. I haven't had much luck growing cilantro at home. We don't get, we only get east and west facing sun, but I feel like that would be a really good one to grow, especially if you enjoy like Mexican or Indian cooking. So put that right in. I'm gonna stir it around and then I'm gonna taste it for seasoning. Keep in mind too, if the if you're using tortilla chips for your guacamole, um, most uh, if you bought ones that are salted, it'll be a little saltier. So it might be better to go to taste it with a chip. But that is all there is to the guacamole. I left mine a little bit chunky because I like it that way. But again, you can feel free to smush it up more. I'm going to see. This is how I'm going to QC going to crunch very loudly. I apologize in advance. Mm -hmm. With the amount of salt on the chips, I feel like this is good. If for some reason you ended up getting too much salt in your guacamole, if you have another avocado, smash that into there. Or if you have um, Greek yogurt or sour cream, you can put that in there because the, the milk will kind of like neutralize it a little bit. Um, that's all there is to that. And now we can play. Are you, how's it going over there, Rachel? Hopefully good, I see. Moving back and forth. Um, this is one, these are taco holders. Um, this way holds two, this way holds three. I just like using them, it just helps keep things less messy. Um, so I'm gonna use these. I recommend microwaving your tortillas for a few seconds. You can either, you can warm them. If you have a, ga a gas range, you can uh, put them right on, on a low heat until they blister, which is lovely. I just don't, I don't have one. Um, you can microwave them on a plate wrapped in a damp paper towel. So you just like wet your hand, like wrap them in a paper towel, wet your hand, and then just tap the paper towel. Um, I'm using one of these stasher bags just because it kind of, it's, a little more eco-friendly and it steams them. So I put them in here and then I just don't quite, I just like pinch it closed a little bit. And I think microwaving it for like 10, 15 seconds is usually good. And that just kind of helps make them a little more pliable. So did you put three in there, Ashley? I put four in there. I'm gonna four. have, me and my husband are gonna start with four. I've done as many that fit in there is fine. Um, okay. You can just, when you take them out, if they don't feel like they're bending enough, just pop them in for a few more seconds. Okay, that's a good tip. Um, yeah. You can also apparently make popcorn in these. I have a silicone popcorn collapsible popcorn maker, so I won't, but this is the one that like stands up. It's got like a wider base, but the ones that don't work also, it's just a little easier to fit them in. So nice and pliable. We usually eat three of these each. I'll put, I'll put three on here for my husband, we'll see. So I'm just gonna grab a spoon, load these up with some potatoes and black beans. I feel like also using canned beans to stretch meat is really nice. Like I've done that with regular taco meat sometimes, like I'll cook the ground beef or whatever, and then I'll add in a can of beans, kind of like we did with the potatoes once they were cooked through. Um, just cause it's a little more budget friendly and then you're using a little less meat. So I've got sweet potatoes and black beans in there. I'm gonna add some of this chimichurri. You might need to uh, kind of whisk it together a little again. And depending on how thick it is, you might wanna kind of guide it out of there. And I, the colors, I mean, the colors on this dish just make me happy. I feel like colorful food can be really good. How much of chimichurri do you put on? Like a teaspoon? Um, let your soul guide you. How much do you like garlic? 
Yeah. Cause you might want to start with just like a little, and then if you like it, like put a little more on there. Um, like how much is that? I, yeah, I would say like maybe a teaspoon or two is probably, I married an Italian. So like we can go heavy on the garlic. Um, if you have sour cream or Greek yogurt, I think that would be great on here. I'm going to fish out a couple of these pickled onions again with these go with whatever everybody's if everybody's eating them everybody's breath is equally potent um and then I like throwing a little hot sauce on top also if you like spicy I my favorite for tacos and for like eggs is Cholula but like whatever kind you like um I feel like Cholula is not super super spicy which is nice and if you want to put guacamole on here you totally can Sometimes I'll use the third little bucket of the taco holder to hold guacamole. <laughs> so that is all there is to the tacos. I probably should have put a little more black beans in there and sweet potatoes, but um, that's it. I hope if you enjoy uh, this recipe or if you, if you don't, feel free to tell me. I'm always open to um, feedback. I know this one has like a lot of very in your face kind of flavors. Um, thank you so much, Jackie. Um, I'm amazed at how much you did in an hour. It's so it's like, <laughs> and I was talking, like if I was in here normally, I'd just be like dancing around the kitchen to music and it would come together a lot quicker. But like I said, it seems like a lot of things. It's really not that difficult. It's just a couple of different processes. Um, yeah. If you do make this, if you're on social media, uh, I would love to see pictures. You can um, post them and tag me at Big Flavors. Um, and I'll post the links to the recipes, which are also in the PDF that I made for you. But those are the links to the two recipes on my website. Um, if you made them and you leave a comment with a star rating, it helps Google when people are searching for like plant based tacos or whatever, it'll help them find my recipes, which is always whew, appreciated. And this is my events schedule. Like I said, the next one with the, the next one of these is. Wednesday, March 23rd at 6 p.m. And we're doing skill lasagna, garlic bread, and a creamy balsamic vinaigrette. Um, I also have next, next week, the 22nd already of February. <laughs> next week, I yeah. think, um, with the Austin Public Library, we're making toasted farro or farro, however you would like to say it, um, grain bowls with roasted winter veggies. Um, really good. Thank you so much, Lori. That's so nice of you to say. Um, so we're making those with the Austin Library. I also have a family cooking class coming up. These are all on my events page, but just the ones of note. Um, Sunday, March 6th, uh, it's a skillet pasta, not the skillet lasagna, kind of different with garlic Parmesan bread. I'm doing a cookie class for teenagers. I don't know if any of you have teens. If you do, that's listed on there too. Um, also still this month, so. Lots of food, always happy to connect with you guys. Um, Oh, I'm so glad, Rachel. Yeah, I'm like, you're going to be squeezing all of the limes and lemons now. <laughs> I also make a bigger one for oranges and grapefruits. Um, I have it in the other room. It's like a big orange one. So I know like if you're only going to buy one, I'd buy the one that's technically for lemons because they sell like a green one that's smaller for limes. But like you can squeeze a lime in here, you know. Um, the one for grapefruits and oranges is a lot bigger and it's like, it's got like an extra metal piece that you really got to kind of muscle into but yeah okay thank you so much this was amazing thank you I'm so glad thank you for joining yeah thank it's you all fun. for joining and Ashley thank you so 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 much you're so amazing thank you anytime I love I love it and I love that we're kind of having dinner together even though we're not technically yeah I love that I love it <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stop the recording for you